excited because it's the first time I've decided to sit down and film a makeup tutorial in a very very long time. I think I finally figured out a setup that might work for better lighting and things like that. Let me know as you're watching the video how it works out for you on your end as you're seeing it through your computer screen. I hope this will be great. I'm very excited about this. I've decided to film more of an everyday makeup tutorial. This is a look I've been wearing quite frequently. A simple type of eye, slightly stronger brows. I've grown out my dark hair again and a bright lip. This is a look I've been wearing pretty consistently in my videos back to back and so many of you have said such nice things and great compliments on this new look I'm trying out so I thought I'd share it with you in the beauty tutorial as well. So get ready, sit down, get comfortable, pull out your makeup brushes and let's get going. So I'm starting off with absolutely clean skin. I've just washed, toned, moisturized, put on everything I need, SPF if I'm going outside. Um, if I am doing this a little bit after I've done my morning skincare routine, I sometimes will rehydrate my skin a little bit with a bit of toner, um, in which case I'll likely use the Hadala Bo Shirojin Whitening toner and just pat that over my face to give myself a little bit extra moisture. I do like my skin to be moist before I started putting on my foundation. Now the foundation I'm currently using, have been using for the past good month or maybe even two months quite consistently, even for filming actually, has been the MAC Face and Body. I'll give you another quick look right here. This is in the color C1, which is the lightest they have in the C range. So you do a little shaking up like so. And then I like to apply it with my fingers, which is something kind of new for me, although I've owned this foundation for a good number of years. I've recently found that this has been the best method for adhesion, for a more natural finish, and for easier blendability. So I'll pop a little bit on my palm like this, and then take my fingers, maybe like three fingers over here, do a little rub like that. It does get a little bit messy, so don't mind that and then kind of pat this into the skin. I like how this foundation gives quite a natural finish, but still mimics the texture of your skin, but just kind of enhances your skin. I currently don't have too many blemishes or spots or any major skin issues. So I find just using the MAC Face and Body on a day-to-day -day basis is quite decent for me and I don't need anything too heavy unless I'm going to be photographed, I'm going to an event, or something major like that. So this is with just the face and body on. Now if I'm going out at night, I'll likely do a little bit of concealing, this little spot on my nose, around the eyes, we might come back to that. I'll see how it looks by the time we are at the end of this look. Now I'm going to add my blush now, which has been a cream blush by Ben Nye called Blushing Bride. This is part of their Media Pro line, and I'm using this with a MAC 130 brush and um, sometimes I use the real techniques that's fine as well get a little bit on the tip and apply that to the cheeks because I'm going to be wearing a bit of a darker lip color I don't want my blush to be too baby pink which is what I tend to wear I wear a lot of colors like NARS Desire that's one of my favorite colors or the candy doll blushers in I believe it's called strawberry pink but those tend to be a bit too much I feel like and too bright for the red lip that I've been wearing a lot this season. So I've been going for a more subtle type of blush. And if you can't see it on camera right now, that's probably a good thing because or else that means I'm putting on way too much for day-to-day -day life. That for the eyes, I'm going to be using a very simple little palette, which was actually a gift with purchase from Lancome. I'm going to pick up this color right here called Click. It is a shimmer shade from the color design formulation right here. And I'm using just a dense, small shader brush. You can use them from any brand. It doesn't matter. Some of my favorite brushes are from Liz Watier. I think they're very well made and last a long time. Now, I'm going to try to do this without making a mess. I'm going to apply this over the entire eyelid. The reason I'm not using a completely matte shade or just using a brown is because I find that kind of boring. And it's nice to have a bit of a taupe or some kind of color on the lids. So I'm taking this very easily over the entire lid area and if needed, just blending out the edges with my fingers. I'm not very fussy when it comes to my eye makeup and uh, what tools I use. I usually prefer just one or two brushes and I'm good to go for my entire eye look. So fingers always come in handy as well. So simply just put that over the lid. You get a bit of definition, a bit of color, nothing too crazy. And I'll do the same thing with the other eye right here. 
Now I wouldn't be taking this look from a day to a bit of a slightly nighttime option. I'd add a little bit of this shade right here next to it called Couture, part of the intense formulation from the color design series. So I'll do that right now. Just take a little bit on the very tip of this brush, exact same brush, and put that along the outer corner of the eye, starting a little bit past my actual eye area right here. So a little bit past that and blend it towards the inner middle of the eye very lightly for a tiny bit more definition and of course this is a matte shade so it'll give a little bit more contrast as well so depending on whether i'm wearing this for day or night i can definitely work this into a few different variations and really depending on how comfortable you are with your colors and how much makeup you want to wear on a day-to-day -day basis with your darker lip color so i think that's about good and taking the shimmer shade right here back to click and take that on my brush and run it along the lower lash line now on to brows important part of this look because i've currently grown out my natural hair color all that you see on my head right now i've been using a darker brow color which currently is from too faced it's their eyeshadow duo and i'm using sex Brussel right here on a firm um, angled eyebrow brush this one is from posh very old but very good i've been using it for a long time this brush and i'm just going to dip a bit into the sex Brussel color and tap that off on the back of my hand slightly and this really just takes practice i get a lot of questions about doing eyebrows and you know what i still don't think i'm very good but if you do it every day you just practice it and eventually kind of get a bit of muscle memory and um, your hand can just it just knows what it's doing i think for the most part i've got it down to something i really like so i like to start off not at the very inner part of my brow or else you're going to get too much color in here so start around the middle towards the arc and then i'll work my way back to the front and then finish up the um the tail of my eyebrow so i'm going to start here again and do the tail now i like to wear my eyebrows quite long um, because i like to elongate my eyes and with the false lashes i'm going to be wearing it'll make a difference you guys can tell us later And then work whatever's left on my brush to the front of my brows. And sometimes you just need a finger to really blend out that front bit if it gets too heavy. All right, on to eyeliner. I love liquids. No lying about that. I wear almost every single day. And uh, two I've been using frequently, my beloved Revlon Colorstay Liquid Eyeliner. Fabulous stuff. Or on top also, if you guys like a pen form, the Maybelline Eye Studio Master Precise Liquid Liner in black. I always wear black. And I think today I'm going to start with the Maybelline one. Now this is a little tricky, so I'm going to use my mini mirror right here. And what I like to do, because the tip of this is so long, you really want to lean it and um, kind of place it on the angle you want and then do one smooth stroke. And if you practice that enough, you can get it really easily. One stroke, two stroke, you're done super quick. Um, it is one of the reasons I really like this felt tip liner. So here we go. I'm going to lay this on an angle. And just pull that towards the inner corner of the eye now i don't go all the way in because my two eyes are actually different as you can see right here um without mascara or anything i have two different eye shapes and if i do my liner all the way in and very thick it will make the difference much more obvious so i like to focus my liner on the outer corner extending past my natural eye shape and just probably pull it down to around here but not all the way to the inner corner and if you need to fix the edges, do that right now. Now, on to one of my favorite parts, lashes. Eyelash curler, Shiseido. Um, mascara, Maybelline, the Colossal Volume Express in waterproof. False lashes, as always, right now, the Dolly Wink Sweet Cat like so very kind of fluttery very natural although still very long they're absolutely beautiful been wearing them 
to bits and pieces. I need a new pair. So I'm going to put that on and come right back. So while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the lashes for the other side, I just want to show you how it looks like with lashes only on one side. As you can see, it makes quite a big difference and the winged liner that I did earlier doesn't look quite so dramatic either once I've popped on these long kind of fluttery eyelashes and really balances things out and elongates the eye along with the longer eyebrow I have on here. Last bit, lip color. We're talking something bright, something bold, rich, pigmented. I have a lot of options here and I kind of wear them interchangeably. The um, Makeup Academy Lip Boom in, what is this? It's a situation, super beautiful color. There's also the Bourjois Rouge Edition, what is this, number 14. It's a rich kind of burgundy shade, similar. Um, I've got the Annabelle Twist Up lip crayons, Monroe, Cherry, Vamp, they're all super gorgeous. But what I'm going to do today is something a lot simpler and easier to touch up. And especially if I'm going to be outside for most of the day, I'm not going to worry too much about having to fix up my red lipstick. So I'm going to go with this, which is the LA Colors Lip Liner Pencil in P506 Forever Red. And it's just a very simple creamy type of lip pencil. I'll do a little color swatch right here. That's what it looks like. I'm going to line my lips and I'm going to do this with a little bit of a cheat because my bottom lip tends to be slightly fuller than the top one. So I'm going to round up the top lip just a little bit. So here we go. I like to start at the very top with the little dip right here. And then you want to do one smooth, clean line. If you make a mistake, you can go back and fix it later. Um, but if you do short strokes, I find it tends to look kind of choppy and feathery. There we go, two lines. I'm going to fill in this entire lip area. And lastly, if I want to make the lip look just a little bit more matte or to make it more long lasting, take a bit of powder right here, the Ben Nye Media Pro in Bella 002 with a little eyeshadow brush like that and just tap it onto the lip. Don't swipe it, don't smudge it, you're gonna get lipstick everywhere. Just tap it onto the lip. look quite a simple eye slightly darker eyebrows and then a red lip which has been what I've been wearing on pretty much a day-to-day -day basis hope you guys enjoyed this video you guys can also check out more photographs up on my blog I'll put the link down below to the corresponding blog post the full list of products that I used for this look will also be listed in my blog post so leave me a comment show me some love I'll talk to you guys soon take care bye